Hi, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Bridget and I create content around beauty, bookish content, and way more lifestyle content is on the way. So please subscribe. Stay tuned if you enjoy this video and if you enjoy me. So let's get into it. So I am doing... Oh my gosh, Bridget, what are you doing? Um, I am doing the makeup declutter tag and I actually have the questions pulled up on my computer because normally I would have them pulled up on my phone, but I did not charge my camera before starting this video. So I'm using my phone to film really quick. I hope that that is okay. And if you see things in the background, discount it. I live here, number one. And you know, life be life and back there. But number two, I just came back from a trip and soon as I was coming back, I got COVID. So nothing's unpacked, okay? So... Yes, I should be unpacking, but we're doing this first. So let's get into it. So the first question is makeup item that's impractical. Y'all, I have been struggling with this. Like I came up with multiple answers and then I was like, but which one though? So I have two answers. Number one, I don't even own any of these, but loose highlighters. Loose highlighters are impractical for me. I probably will never buy a loose highlighter. And then like I was about to say, and then of course I'll see a loose highlighter that I love, but I've seen plenty of loose highlighters that I think are beautiful. But loose highlighters are just impractical for me. I don't like how they lay on the skin. I don't like anything about them. They're messy. Just no. But something that I have that I need to use more actually is the, um, like a red gloss. A red gloss is semi-impractical because glosses are just, you know, they just slip around a lot more. And so I just think red, when I think red, I think control. I need control with that thing, okay? And a red gloss, but I will never get rid of this red gloss. I'm gonna use it because red is my power color and I also just love the formula of the intense butter glosses. And I think the red actually works in this formula because it's a thicker formula. And because of that, it actually clings to the lips and it doesn't move around as much as you think, so yes. The other answer that I came up with that nobody asked me about is like all shimmer palettes. What's funny is I actually, unlike loose highlighters that I know I will never buy, I love a good all shimmer palette. Look at that. This is from the Pat McGrath. These are the Eye Ecstasy. Remember when she came out with these little palettes and I was like, oh my God, she made something for those of us who don't have no money. <laughs> they were like $25 and I absolutely love them. But for me, I will almost never do an all shimmer look. I have very, very hooded eyes. Let me see. Can you see that? And on top of that, it's like a, a heavy, heavy hood. So I just feel like all shimmer eyes don't do me any favors. And I don't like how they look on me. But I love the art and just looking at all shimmer palettes. So and looking at all shimmer looks. But more than likely, I will always pair them with at least one matte. So there's that. And the next question is a mascara that's definitely expired. I can't even participate because I don't let mascaras expire. I don't even play that around here. <laughs> so I have nothing for this. The next one is a red lipstick you never wear. And the lipstick that I came up with is actually from one of my favorite lines. And it's the Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. I absolutely love this line. If you have not checked it out, you need to. Um, I don't wear... Oh, damn. There we go. I don't wear this red and I love a deeper red too, especially a deeper red, but um, I don't wear this red nearly as much as I thought I would. I do wear it and I have gotten use out of it, but um, I don't wear this red as much as I thought I would. And when I do wear it, I do feel a little conscious in it, but I do still wear it. Just not as much as I thought I would. Um, the next question, I feel like I'm not even answering any of these questions y'all. <laughs> The next question is a high-end item not worth the money. What did I pick for this one? Okay, I picked this one, but then literally as I was sitting here talking myself through it, I think I might have talked myself out of it. And people are going to be upset with me about this. Okay, the Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Reach Face Base. I like this product, okay? But sometimes I feel like it irritates my skin because it does have like different essential oils and stuff in it. And I really wish it didn't, but this moisturizes like nobody's business. So if she came out with a fragrance-free version or whoever is over Bobbi Brown now, because I don't believe Bobbi Brown is actually over Bobbi Brown anymore, um, I would probably purchase it and probably really love it. So then I'm like, so then is it not worth the money? I, 
I still just don't think it's worth the money because it's $60. And listen, maybe that's just where I'm at in life right now, but $60 is asking a lot of me. Like, could we could we hit on 40? But it is high end. It is Bobby Brown, so I get it. But yeah, so this is this is a hard spin for me, okay? It is $60. So I would say if you never tried it before, get the smaller one. And if you can even get it during a sale, point at all to something like that, then, you know, combine some things and make it more affordable for yourself if you can. So I think it's this one. Um, a drugstore dud. Number one. I put it back in the packaging because I was going to return it. Lost the receipt. Couldn't return it because I bought it at the grocery store. I think that's where I got this from. Um, this is the e.l.f eyebrow kit in dark now if you've been on my channel for a while you might remember that i used to i can't even open it i used to love this product and i was like you know what it's been a very long time elf has really come a long way let me go back and revisit you know something that i really love and also because i'm on the hunt for a great brow powder and so I was like, you know, well, this has a powder and it also has the tinted wax. That will be absolutely great because me and my brows have been fighting. Um, and this is not the same formula that it used to be at all. It is so like thin and there is no pigmented. And listen, I don't need a brow powder or anything like that to be like so pigmented off the bat. But no, I mean, I'm digging into this and it literally looks like I did nothing to my brows. So it was just a waste of money. It was just a waste of money. And along that same vein, and I will declutter that, and then I also will declutter this, is the L'Oreal Infallible Paints Liquid Liner in White. I wanted a fun liquid liner that I could play with sometimes, but this one, okay, first of all, you swatch it on the back of your hand, you're like, yes, yes to that, okay? It is never, ever, ever translated onto the eye like that. So how it swatches on your hand, your arm, anything like that is not how it translates to the eye over eyeshadow. Over eyeshadow, it damn near looks clear. And I do multiple coats and then it still looks clear. And it's just a frustrating experience. And I could see someone who struggles with eyeliner, i.e. me, um, just it just ruining the experience of putting on eyeliner. And I I imagine that white might be hard to do, but I feel like you could do it a little bit better than this. And yeah, it just, it was a dud for me. And honestly, I didn't like most of the shades in this line, but this one, this one was infuriating. So it's a no for me. Um, The next question is an eyeshadow palette you forgot you had. It's weird to be reading off of the thing. But for that one, I'm going to go with this. And it's not so much that I forgot I had it, but it's just, I always reach for anything else over it. And I haven't used it nearly as much as I thought I would. And if I remember correctly, this was given, I won this in a giveaway or something like that. And I do like it. And I think what it's done, can I stop saying that and tell you what it is? It's the ColourPop Give It To Me Straight palette. And the names are on the back. I really, I like everything about the packaging and stuff. And the colors in here are beautiful. Like absolute, when I see it, I'm like, what's the problem? <laughs> when I see it, I'm like, what's the problem? And I think it's a situation where it's me, it's not them. But what it's shown me is that I really like the ColourPop formula, but I don't reach for this palette a lot. And so maybe at some point I need to do some type of little project with this palette to really play with it and then figure out, I'm sorry, let me just get comfortable, to really play with it and then figure out like, do I want to get rid of this or do I not want to get rid of it? But, um, because I don't feel like I've given it a chance. And this is what it looks like. This is a color story that I'm very interested in. So I'm just like, what is it? I don't know. I don't know, but that's that's what's happening. Um, also, let me know is if you have this palette, let me know if this is like one of your favorite palettes or one of your go-to palettes. Um, let me know. Um, the next question is a foundation that's not your shade match. And for that, oh, I grabbed two different ones out. The first one is the Fenty Beauty Hydrating Longwear Foundation. I have not been a fan of many of the Fenty Beauty base products. The one that I actually really like is the Tinted Moisturizer. But 
Um, this is the one I thought I was going to love, but I think the reason why I don't love it is not so much the formula, but the shade. I have it in 350 and number one, y'all, I went and I got tan like nobody's business in Punta Cana, okay? So I'm a little bit darker than what I normally am, but even with that, 350 was a bit light for me. So I think that a little bit deeper shade would have been better for me. I also think the undertone was all wrong in this for me. So it was just multiple things, honestly, going against it. Okay, the computer went off. But yeah, it was just multiple things going against it. So yeah, this me filming this video right now reminds me of old school YouTube. Like I just feel like I have no fancy setup right now. I'm reading off my computer. Y'all are on top of an Amazon box. Like <laughs> just listen. Um, the other thing that I picked out is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Foundation. I have this in the shade Medium Dark 147W. Um, I just feel like when I wear this, it looks off on my skin. I need to try this more time. Maybe this will be a good one to try for like a, a final round. Like, does it get kept or does it get decluttered? Both of these maybe, actually. Um, but I just, I don't remember ever feeling like, yeah, I really love my makeup. And it just felt off to me. But I never quite found the shade that seemed to fit me well. So, there's that one. And then, product that wasn't worth the hype. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. Um, it was not worth the hype for me. I almost put this as the um, high-end item not worth the money, but I can see the value in this. And I can see how this was people's holy grail palette. I, I can see all of that. So I can't say it's not worth the money, but it wasn't worth the hype for me. Um, I just was let down by these shades. And to be fair, I did purchase this right before it went out of stock when they did the whole like refresh on this. And a lot of people were saying that this palette is not the same as the original OG formula that people used to uh, rage about. Rage? I don't know, guys. I need to eat. I'm very shaky. <laughs> but people were saying that it's not the same. The shades are more cooler tone and they just didn't blend as well as I thought they should, especially for like $54. Now I got it on sale and I think it was like $25 when I bought it, but it just wasn't worth the hype for me. The one shade in this palette that saves this palette for me is Smog. If I could just get this shade by itself, I'd be okay with that. Smog is, mm, I won't declutter this because I love this shade right here um but yeah i don't know like i remember trying it so many times and just being like it's not happening for me and the other thing that's so interesting about that to me is i love seeing palettes that um kind of duplicate this and are similar to this and i love those color stories and i, I mean i really like this color story but the formula and just everything about it just it didn't hit the mark for me so it wasn't worth the hype for me but I wanted to own it because makeup history <laughs> and I mean this really did a lot for eyeshadows and then the makeup community do you remember when every brand like everybody had this in everybody's favorite this was the palette of a very long moment so I'm happy I own it and I will use it but it just wasn't it didn't become like oh my god the best palette my favorite palette of all time you feel me so yeah um concealer you couldn't make work i i'm a huge huge concealer fan it's one of my favorite things to do in my makeup routine and a concealer that i feel like from what i remember i i reach over this all the time i don't remember liking how this looked on my skin and i feel like on days when i wore it i just like my makeup a little bit less and i just felt like it showed a lot of texture and i was really surprised by that because it's supposed to be like a hydrating concealer and even like powdering it down a little bit i just felt like it showed way more business than it needed to be showing and i just Mm, I don't know. I haven't really been able to get along with the Pretty Fresh line. And I thought that was going to be a line I absolutely loved. So let me know if there's something you really love from the Pretty Fresh line. Or, um, you know, what your tips and tricks are for this concealer right here. Because I would like to try to make it work. And then finally, if you had to start one makeup category from scratch, what would it be? I was just looking through my drawers and I went 
through a few categories because I'm feeling a little funky about a few of my categories but I think what it would be because I okay so I was torn between my powders and my highlighters but I think what it would probably be is highlighters I'm so much more interested nowadays in maybe buying a little bit less and getting like that that product that I really want and when it comes to highlighters I find that what I really love is like cream and liquid highlighters what do I have the most of powder highlighters and you know I have dry skin I have textured skin I have large pores you know all up in this area right here I have some pitted scars on my face you know so things are going on and I just find that most powders can exaggerate that. I also am more of a fan of a really pretty glow. Like you're gonna see it, you feel me? But I just like to be glowing and you can't really look up close and detect where that's happening at. And I find that that happens more for me with a cream or a liquid highlighter. So that is probably the area of my collection that I would start over and probably just have a smaller collection I think my collection is kind of small, but I would have an even smaller collection and it would mostly be cream and liquid. So that is the end of this tag. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to you, Ava, for creating this. Um, I have loved this tag. I've watched so many of them and I've wanted to do it for a long time. So I did it. I'm going to try to let go of perfectionism and just edit this and put it up from my phone. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, definitely comment, um, answer any of the questions that you want to answer. Um, yeah, and just let me know what you thought. I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye.